How you doing? I'm Zachary Alford. Uh, I've been a Vader artist since 2005. And I'm here in gorgeous, sunny Boston, getting ready to play a show with Glee. Um, I've been playing drums since I was 11. I'm from New York City. Um, and uh, for those of you who don't know me, you might uh, know some of the bands I played with, such as the B-52s, uh, which was my first real big foray into world touring. I've also worked with uh, Bruce Springsteen, David Bowie, Gwen Stefani, Kelly Clarkson, uh, Billy Joel. I like to use the Vader Pro Rock. This is my preferred stick. Uh, it's a little bit longer than a standard size stick, um, but not quite as heavy as what I used to use. And um, they really stand up to some punishment. Uh, very, very well balanced and uh, strong for, you know, if you're playing uh, music that you want to hit hard on, these are these are great. But they're not they're not too heavy, so you can do some uh, some more sensitive stuff with them too. I started playing drums when I was 10, and uh, I think I was inspired by uh, my older brother's best friend, who had a uh, a drum set in his room. His name was. Uh, Chandra Sharma and he was a fantastic drummer. He lived on the 18th floor of my building. I lived on 21 and um, whenever I would go to his house I just was fascinated by these drums. They were just beautiful and and I somehow just understood how it worked. It wasn't really a mystery to me so he used to let me sit on there and bang around and uh, it was just love at first touch, you know. By the time I was 11, I had my first kit. Uh, my mom let me play in my bedroom too. She couldn't really say no, because Chandra did it. And um, there were a lot of good drummers in my neighborhood. I also was influenced by Poojie Bell, uh, who lived a couple blocks away. And uh, I went to school with Sterling Campbell and Ben Porowski and um, Charlie Drayton was around. Um, there was a lot of, a lot of music in, in the city at that time. Uh, Omar Hakim was playing with Weather Report and uh, I studied with Kenwood Denard, first the Drummers Collective and then over uh, at his school um, on East 106th Street. So that was really how I started. A lot of influences, a lot of playing out in clubs, um, you know, a lot of practicing at home. The club scene in New York at that time was really active. We could play all kinds of places. You had uh, Danceteria, the Peppermint Lounge, uh, the Ritz, CBGB's, um, A7, tons of places everywhere. and. Uh, and I was playing in a bunch of bands, five or six bands. Guys from uh, Defunct, The Dance, um, Foreign Legion, IQ. Um, my first band was Johnson & Johnson, uh, which was kind of an avant-garde funk band. Guitar, drums, and saxophone. That was the lineup. And I was 14. Uh, but they let me play. Eventually, that led to um, going overseas and playing jazz festivals, which was my first real experience uh, playing bigger crowds. Um, and then uh, my first tour on a major label was with an RCA artist named Grayson Hugh, and we toured the States in a bus for the first time. Because all that European stuff is like by train. 
and you just show up and there's a kit there. All you bring is your cymbals and sticks. Grace and Hugh, who was a soul artist on RCA Records. And uh, that was a lot of fun, you know. I figured I had somehow made it into uh, the legitimate touring world. But it was really my, my start with the B-52s that, that broke me into world touring status. And that came about because I was playing in like five different bands in New York City. Everything from hard rock to avant-garde funk uh, to kind of alternative dance music. And um, Sarah Lee had just recorded the album with the B-52s, Cosmic Thing, and they were looking for a drummer because Charlie couldn't do the tour, Charlie Drayton. And she asked me if I wanted to audition, and I said, yeah. So it was totally word of mouth. And um, that tour was uh, originally slated to just be a five-week um, U.S. tour, but it turned into a 14-month world tour because the record blew up so big. And uh, yeah, that, that just changed my life. I was suddenly on MTV every day and you know, staying in great hotels and flying first class and, you know. From then, everything was just word of mouth. Uh, I moved on to play with, with uh, Bruce Springsteen after that. And uh, after that, David Bowie. Um, and those, you know, I did two world tours with David. Um, Doing a lot, a lot of international stuff with uh, other artists because, especially at that time, word of mouth was really the big thing. You know, I've never had a manager or an agent or anything, and uh, people see you. And I did a lot of work with international artists who were fans of either Bowie or Springsteen. Um, and then uh, I worked with Gwen Stefani, uh, with Galen Dorsey, who was my other partner in crime with David. And actually, Galen and I have our own band now called Media, and it's a uh, four-piece, keys, guitar, bass, and drums. And it's very uh, atmospheric, kind of cinematic, alternative, uh, just like chill music that we have a lot of fun writing. It's all written out of jams, so everybody's a part author of every song. And um, it's really organic, all analog synths, very little digital processing. Uh, but uh, look for that, media. We got our first record out on iTunes and we just recorded our second one, so we're pretty psyched about that. My biggest influences on drums were um, John Bonham, Mitch Mitchell, Omar Hakim, Charlie Drayton, uh, and then guys I grew up with. I mean, Sterling Campbell, Ben Porowski. Uh, they still influence me to this day. Um, I loved uh, Billy Cobham, Lenny White. In fact, uh, there's an old video of a Lenny White clinic that I'm in when I was 17. And I actually came out of the audience and he asked me, Frank Katz, and one other guy to try to keep time while he solos and we're, we're clapping and it's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, Lenny was, I used to love Lenny. Um, these days, um, I listen to a lot of gospel drummers. I like uh, Clarence Lamont Moore. I like Jay Bass. I like uh, uh, Tony Royster, Questlove. Uh, pretty much listen to a lot of everything. Stevie Wonder is one of my favorite drummers. I mean, I still listen to those rest records, and you know, my jaw drops at their feel. His amazing feel. Of course, Ringo can't not talk about Ringo. 
Um, those are my main, my main influences, I think. These days, the whole music industry has really changed a lot. I've seen it change from, you know, when I started out, there was no YouTube, there was no internet. Um, concerts were not expensive. You could see music all the time. You could play music all the time. Uh, everybody was playing a lot. Now, I honestly have to say, I wouldn't have a clue how to get started in the industry if I was starting out now. It's so different. Um, but at the same time, uh, I think obviously YouTube is key. Uh, that's how you get seen, that's how you get exposure. And there are lots of people out there looking at YouTube clips all the time. Um, but the other way the industry's changed is Record sales are, are no longer driving the, the industry. Um, so there's a lot less, uh, the budgets are smaller, tours are smaller, um, or they're gigantic. Um, I feel like it's harder to get on big tours now. Um, so, for unestablished artists coming up, it's a bit trickier. Uh, I think you need to just get as much experience as you can. Um, learn how to play with a click, for sure. Um, that can only help, even if you're playing indie rock. Another thing that's not always talked about, especially for drummers, but for musicians in general, is uh, basically, um, how to play in a way that will ensure that you have a, a long, healthy career physically. Um, I think it's important uh, to have good posture when you're playing uh, and to try and, and by that I mean as straight a back as you can. And one thing that helps that I've, I've found is I'm, I'm sitting higher than I used to because uh, your center of gravity changes. Your, my knees are slightly lower than my hips now, and so it be, it's easier to use your toe on the kick pedal, and that, that can save your ankles and your knees a lot, I think, because uh, especially for those of us who play hard, and I used to play hard, um, it's a lot of wear and tear on your, your hands, your wrists, your ligaments, uh, your knees, your hips. Um, so I find that it's not really necessary to uh, to smash the drum so hard. And one of the things that helps with that is sitting a little bit higher up. You know, you're above your drums. You got more leverage. You can press down on them easier. Uh, and you save your back. Back problems are not something you want to be dealing with when you're 35. The other thing I think is really important is learning to relax when you play. You know, it's really exciting to see a drummer that's working hard and uh, really exerting himself. But if you want to um, kind of find that sweet spot where you're doing that, but you're relaxed all the time too. And uh, you'll, you'll save your elbows, you'll save your your finger joints, um, and by that I mean when your arm is relaxed and you're smacking the drum, the energy passes through. If you're muscling it, uh, not only do you have a tendency to choke the actual drum, but, um, but you'll find that uh, you might need to ice your hands afterwards. And uh, I used to do that, and I don't have to do it anymore. So relaxation is key. It also helps you, your groove. The more you can relax, the smoother your, your transitions from section to section. Uh, you know, talk to any of the great drummers, they'll tell you that relaxation is key. Thanks for checking us out, and uh, checking out the Vader site, Vader Sticks. Check them out. Um, Visit me on my website, 
ZachAlfred.com or on the media site, uh, which uh, we got a media Facebook page, Media the Band, MySpace, and um, see you on the stage.